I'm, I'm still intrigued as a fellow storyteller how you keep your optimism. It's hard. I, I, I don't think, I mean, I think you, you probably, well, it's maybe a little different today than it was back then, but um, I didn't, I came out of Iraq with next to no optimism. Mm. Uh, and my initial hope, I mean, I, I, I went to Afghanistan, the beginning of my three years there was actually after I'd come back, after I'd written the first book, after I'd been the national editor of the Washington Post, Obama gets elected. I'm like, I don't want to edit politics anymore. Um, this is going to be his focus. I thought, all right, these guys are going to finally fix this, and I want to, I want to tell that story. Yeah. And, and yet I see a, um, a, a brilliant, earnest, young president and a team around him, Hillary Clinton, Bob Gates, Richard Holbrook, um, stumble into their own set of, uh, you know, make their own miscalculations and make, you know, some of their, Myers, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, this, this, is, this is what's so, uh, the, a, a legacy of these conflicts, not just for the journalists who covered them, but for those who've served there in all capacities, is that, you know, unlike, you know, for instance, the Second World War, um, there is no, uh, you know, definitive ending. Um, yeah. And, and you're sort of left with that. And it, I, think, I think it, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about what the impact of that is for, for troops, but for those who've been there chronicling it, it has its own toll. And that may be one of the reasons why I sort of pulled the ripcord, you yeah. know, two and a half years ago to move yeah. out west and to say, I want to try, you know, I, 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 uh, I had written this book with Howard Schultz about veterans um, and it was back at the paper. I think it was around that time you and I traveled to the Emirates and we were working on the show. And I, 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 did, I did one of the greatest jobs in American newspaper journalism. I, um, uh, I could travel the world and write long form stories once a month. I mean, uh, it doesn't get any better than that. I, I didn't have to blog or tweet or, you know, do it. And um, you know, Howard said, you know, why don't you move out to Seattle and we can continue to create uh, content in the public interest, and you can, you know, use the resources of Starbucks to make films and uh, try different things and experiment. Uh, and it wasn't about selling coffee or right, promoting the brand. And I, I sort of blew them off for weeks. And I woke up one morning and I thought, you know, I don't want to wake up having ten years from now and having regretted not walking through the store. But you know, part of it was I had, I felt like I had spent so many years. Uh, looking, you know, focusing in on the problem. And, you know, do I want to write, you know, 10 years from now, do I want to be writing my, you know, 500th Wither ISIS story? Uh, <laughs> is there something else yeah. that I can do? And, and so um, it was a chance to uh, uh, take my storytelling skills um, and apply it in a whole different canvas and one that is uh, actually very much focused now on looking for you know, the good amidst, uh, you know, the, the trauma that racks our society.